Govi, Saxenda, and Maugero are all GLP-1 medications that were originally developed to treat type 2 diabetes, which, in case you don't know, is a disease where the body struggles to manage the sugar in the blood. Now, on the flip side, Wagovi and Saxenda are indicated for weight management, and Maugero will also be getting that indication very soon as well. And they are indicated for individuals that are looking to manage their weight but don't have diabetes. So if a drug that was originally developed to manage blood sugars is then given to individuals that don't have an issue with managing their blood sugars, does that mean it's going to cause issues with blood sugar? Like it's going to cause their blood sugar to go too low? Well, let's find out. Welcome back to the program, you beautiful people. My name is Dr. Dan. I'm a pharmacist turned obesity expert. And before we dive into things today, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss another episode. Plus, you're going to help me to make my self-esteem feel real good every time I get a new subscriber. As well, check out my other channels at The Official Dr. Dan and check out my website, healthevolve.co. So when our blood sugar levels go too low, that is called hypoglycemia. And again, for those of you that may not know, hypoglycemia can be a bad thing, like really bad, like life-threatening bad. And so for a quick review, just for your awareness, if you happen to have a glucometer or a thing that measures your blood sugar at home, what a low blood sugar or hypoglycemic level would be is when your blood sugar shows less than 4.0 millimole per liter or less than 72 milligram per deciliter for my American friends. You guys always have to do things a little bit differently. Anyways, before you even go and test to see if you are hypoglycemic or having an issue with your blood sugars, you're probably going to notice the symptoms first. And the symptoms may be quite pronounced or they might be kind of at a low level. So they might include shakiness, dizziness, hunger, fatigue, difficulty concentrating. In really bad situations, it can get to a place where people are quite belligerent and maybe they're slurring the words and that sort of thing. And in fact, if you've ever been hangry, you have likely experienced, you know, mild symptoms of this. Hangry being angry but hungry, you know. And you might be a little bit more extra irritable or seem to be on edge if you need to definitely eat something. And that's because our blood sugars throughout the day go up and down and sometimes they can dip just right on that edge. But fortunately enough for those people that aren't on medications that push their blood sugars down, there is a corrective mechanism that then kicks in in order to bring your blood sugars back up to the normal level. So that's the lowdown on hypoglycemia and that sort of thing. So the big question, again, can Wagovi, Saxenda, or Maugero ultimately cause an individual to have blood sugar go too low if they don't have diabetes? And the short answer is, is no, with like a, a little star there. And, and the reason for the star is there's a few exceptions to the rule, if you will. Plus, that leaves things on a nice little cliffhanger, so you'll keep hanging out with me here on my YouTube channel. So before I can dive into what the exceptions specifically are, we need to talk a little bit about how the GLP-1 medications actually manage our blood sugars. GLP-1 is actually a hormone that is produced by our body when we eat food. When we inject these medications, we're essentially just increasing the levels of that GLP-1 hormone. What GLP-1 then does as it's released is it goes to our pancreas and tells our pancreas to produce more insulin in order to bring our blood sugar levels down. It also helps to massage and actually increase the efficiency and, you know, the happiness of the cells that are in your pancreas. It then bounces over to your stomach and tells your stomach to slow down how quickly you're digesting food. So it slows down the process of gastric emptying and it finally helps to reduce insulin resistance. Now, if you want a more in-depth review as to what all those things are that I just kind of talked about, hopefully it was, was simplified enough that you kind of got the picture, you can check out my previous video where we went in detail into what exactly the GLP-1 medications do and how they work. So in order to understand the exceptions of the GLP-1 medications, we need to discuss a little bit about how the GLP-1 medications actually work. So GLP-1 is actually a hormone that's produced by our body. The GLP-1 medications are basically increasing the levels of that hormone in our bodies and essentially mimic the effects 
what GLP-1 already does in the body. So to further describe that for you, let's kind of set the scene, if you will. I want you to imagine sitting down when you had your last meal, or perhaps the meal you're eating right now as you watch this video, and as you eat and you crush the food up and it goes down your gullet into your stomach and such like that, the GLP-1 hormone is being released. The first thing that the hormone does is it slows down how quickly food is moving from your stomach to your small intestine. And this is gonna help generate the signal to say, hey, the stomach is full, you should probably stop eating. Next, the GLP-1 hormone then heads over to your pancreas and helps the pancreas to produce more insulin. And in case you don't know, insulin is the molecule or the hormone that helps to bring the sugar in our bloodstream down. The GLP-1 hormone then sends a signal to your liver and says, hey liver, calm down. We don't need you to produce more sugar anymore because we're eating a meal. We're good to go. And then the GLP-1 hormone then heads out to the other cells throughout your body and has a, has a little chat. And basically what it tries to do is to chat to all these cells and say, Hey, you know, this hormone insulin's coming along. It's, it's gonna open up your door to allow sugar to go from the bloodstream to inside of you so you can do all the cell things and such. And so can you just make it a bit easier? And effectively what it does is reduces insulin resistance. And so the sugar in your blood then gets managed and perhaps you are no longer hangry and hell, you might even be happy. And then you go on about your day until your next meal. So the beautiful part about that whole mechanism and in particular the mechanism by which it helps us to manage our blood sugars is that when your blood sugars are within a normal range, regardless if you have diabetes or not, those mechanisms shut off. You see, the body is, is pretty smart. It, it knows what it's doing and how it's managing things. And so it has a number of redundant systems in place. And when something's not needed, it's gonna shut it down. And therefore, whether it is your own personal GLP-1 hormone or that GLP-1 that's coming from a medication such as Ozempic, Sexendo, or Mangero, they are not going to have an effect on your blood sugars if they're within the normal range. And therefore, your blood sugars will not go too low, except in the following instances. And I do want to just note that these instances tend to still be in individuals that have diabetes and not really in individuals that have no diabetes and are just looking to manage their weight with these drugs. So number one, if an individual has additional anti-diabetes medications on board, and in some situations, people who don't have diabetes might be put on anti-diabetes medications. And so individuals that have other medications added to their regimen of Wagovi, Saxenda, or what have you, may be at an increased risk of, of experiencing hypoglycemia. In particular, if you happen to be on medications such as insulin or another drug class called sulfonylurea, such as glycoside or gliburide. And what these medications do is they increase the levels of insulin in your body. Now, the bad thing about them is that they don't shut off when blood sugar levels are normal. They keep working to pump out that insulin even at maybe inappropriate times. And so when a medication like Wagovi or Saxenda or Ozempic is added on and we haven't done proper medication adjustments such as getting rid of those other medications or getting ready to decrease the dose or what have you, there is a potential chance of blood sugars going too low because once the Wagovi or whatever kicks in, it's very effective at bringing blood sugar levels down. And so if the other drugs are still working away and everything normalizes and Wagovi shuts off, then there is a chance that your blood sugars could end up going too low. The second instance is called pseudo-hypoglycemia. So what we mean when we say pseudo-hypoglycemia is basically it's, it's like hypoglycemia, but it's not hypoglycemia. What's happening in this instance is individuals are basically riding at a very high level of blood sugar for a very long time. For a bit of perspective, a high level of blood sugar would be like 15 millimole per liter or 270 milligram per deciliter for the American folks. 
And then if we rapidly bring your blood sugar levels down to the normal range, which is four to seven millimole per liter, or 72 to 126 milligram per deciliter, these individuals may suddenly experience symptoms that are like that of hypoglycemia. Basically, the body is so used to riding way up here that when things get dropped down to here, the body suddenly freaks out and says, hey, this is very abnormal to our normal, and uh, what the heck is going on? Basically, there was just too much change too quickly. It's kind of like when I go away on a tropical vacation and come back to Canada and it's minus 40. It, it's gonna take me some time to reclimatize slash also question all of my life choices. And so they would do a finger poke, their blood sugar levels would actually be in the normal range, but they are experiencing the symptoms of hangriness, irritability, dizziness, confusion, all those sorts of symptoms might be present even though their blood sugar level is not that in the low range. And so to mitigate and manage that, we treat it just like we would any other hypoglycemia episode. Now, the third instance here is idiopathic hypoglycemia. This is relatively rare, like actually really quite rare, but I have seen it in my patients both that have diabetes and don't have diabetes. And idiopathic basically means we, we have no freaking clue. In these cases, it seems like maybe the GLP-1 medications might drop these individuals' blood sugar levels too low. So they're taking the GLP-1 medication, they have no other factors present, but for some reason, their pancreas gets a little excited and pushes their insulin out and that brings their blood sugar levels down to too low of a level, especially to the point where they experience symptoms of the hypoglycemia. This definitely can be a little bit scary, especially if you've never experienced it before, to suddenly get shaky, sweaty, increased hunger, not really knowing what's going on. It's not a pleasant feeling. I've definitely done it to myself when I've way overtrained and not properly nourished my body. It's, it's a weird feeling and it takes some time to subside. Now generally this experience is short-lived and not life-threatening for a couple of reasons. First, your body's counter-regulatory system will ultimately kick in, it'll like wake up because it was sleeping on the job for a little bit and it'll bring your blood sugar levels back up. As well, most people when they're feeling this will then go and eat or drink something and that will then help to bring their blood sugar levels up. From an anecdotal perspective with my patients, when I see this situation occurring, generally we trace it back to the individual hasn't eaten anything all day because the medication just allowed them to forget eating or they ate very little or they're doing a lot of exercise or there's some kind of other component in that regard that ultimately drives the blood sugar levels down or they're not being properly nourished to make sure that their blood sugar levels stay up and where they need it to be. Regardless of what other components might be going on there, what we do to manage it is we just help them to create more structured meals, so making sure they are getting something throughout the day and having a good balance of both protein and carbohydrates as the day goes on. And if they're exercising and that sort of thing, helping them to properly nourish their body around their activity session and so that all then helps and prevents it from happening again. So that tends to be the three main instances or exceptions that may occur. Again, these are relatively rare. Usually there's some other compounding factor that ultimately leads to it and not the medication itself. In terms of the pseudo hypoglycemia, again, very, very rare and very unlikely to occur, but do make sure that you're properly nourishing your body throughout the day, particularly if you're increasing your activity levels. Unless you have diabetes, I don't recommend running out and buying a glucometer. There's really gonna be no value that comes from it. You certainly could have it if it'll make you feel better from a psychological perspective. But overall, like I said, your counter-regulatory systems will kick in if you're not on any other medications that will drive your blood sugar levels down and such like that. As well, it'll just be extra data that comes from the glucometer that you won't really know what to do with and can't actually do anything about. And I hope it all goes without saying, if you're having any concerns in that regard of things, um, probably best to follow up with your care provider versus dropping it down in the comment section here. And for more information, you can check out the Diabetes Canada guidelines. Link is down below. 
you can see the full guidelines on managing hypoglycemia as well as just if you have diabetes getting a lot of really great info as to what diabetes is and how we treat it and such. To wrap those things up, despite the exceptions and all that sort of stuff, the GLP-1 medications are very safe and very effective. So until next time, you beautiful people, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below so you don't miss another episode as they come out. As well, check me out on my other channels at The Official Dr. Dan and check out my website healthevolve.co if you need some help on your weight management journey. And as always, please remember that small tweaks lead to massive peaks.